months under IS control. When the Shia militia commander and his men entered the town, they discovered a mass grave, around 60 bodies, mostly Iraqi army soldiers and truck drivers. They had their hands tied, some had been beheaded. The smell of death lingers in the air, and with it, hatred and mistrust. One of the problems here is that the local people of this town supported IS in what they were doing. They have run away. They are not here. Some of the locals worked with Islamic State. Will, will those people ever be able to come back here and live? Impossible. The key to President Obama's strategy is to drain the Sunni extremists of Islamic State of local support by drawing moderates into a broad coalition. But Suleiman Beg is deserted. Even the Sunni mayor, who fled IS in fear of his own life, says it's too dangerous for him now to be here in the presence of the Shia militia. You're afraid? Yeah. Right. Why are you afraid? <laughs> I, can I can't tell you now, he says. <laughs> okay, I understand. We'll meet him again later. One of the Shia militia groups, the Badr Brigade, invited us in for tea at their forward base just a few kilometers from the front line. Their members are, by and large, Iraqis. But the Badr Brigade is trained and funded by Iran. They don't want to talk about that, though. Without doubt, it has been American firepower in the skies that has done the most to halt the precipitous advance of IS. But here, on the ground, it's not America, but Iran that is running the show, and not just through their proxies, the Shia militia. Few are willing to talk openly about the extent of Iran's involvement in fighting Islamic State on the ground in Iraq. But one Iraqi army officer, who wanted to remain anonymous for his own safety, told us that Iranian forces were operating in large numbers alongside Kurdish forces as well as Shia militia. They're in charge of heavy weapons and artillery, locating the enemy and shelling them. It's clear the weapons are from Iran. The Iranians are all over this area. They control it now. So you're saying that Iran, in effect, controls this part of Iraq? They control everything except the flag, he tells me. Less than three years after American soldiers were forced reluctantly to withdraw from Iraq, Iranian troops and their proxies appear to be taking their place. Moderate Sunnis now find themselves squeezed between the brutal jihadists of Islamic State and the hostile Iranian-backed Shia militia groups. The Sunni mayor of Suleiman Beg, whom we met earlier, has had to flee his hometown. He says he and his people are being forced to pick sides. Everyone hates IS, but the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Five of my brothers have been killed by Islamic State or Al-Qaeda, but I would rather they won this war than the other side. We travelled on to the latest front line, just a few kilometres west of Suleiman Beg and the site of the mass grave. IS fighters are holed up just a few hundred metres away. As we're filming, a shell lands in the field in front of us. Then the sound of another being fired. You got it? Well, everyone just dived for cover because out of the blue, we heard the whistle of what sounded like a mortar coming from the Islamic State lines over there. Everyone went face down into the dust. The shell landed somewhere away. No one was hurt, but there are daily battles here. This outpost is controlled by the Kurds, the third force in a growing conflict between Sunni and Shia. For the moment, the Kurds are content to fight IS alongside the Shia militia, but in the long term, they have their own interests. This is Kurdish territory, the commander tells me. We won't accept the presence of Shia militia here. The United States sees little option but to support this unlikely alliance against the jihadists of Islamic State. But Iraq's divisions are becoming ever more entrenched, 
and on the ground, Iran's control grows stronger by the day.